Welcome back viewers. Um, we were talking about the Nkrumah projects that he did for Ghana. So we are back on track and I want Mr. Charles Bedukusi to continue from where he left off. So viewers, um, just let's listen to Mr. Charles what you have to say. Can you carry on with what Thank you were saying? Thank you, Mr. Eric Okudon, for, for having me. Um, obviously, we, we were talking about the smart, obviously, with the time. And also, I was saying that the project itself, or whatever the president comes in with, whatever vision, that thing has to be also smart mm -hmm. in itself. Yeah. So, we are looking at the various um, leaders that have come into power. We have looked at in Chroma, it is emphatic. That the work that Nkrumah done in nine years, mm -hmm. nobody can match it. It's it's impossible for any. There is it doesn't match with anybody. So Nkrumah so, took nine years to achieve six, all that amenities yes. and infrastructure for Ghana. Yes, and nine he set years. and he set that standard. You know, when you look at it in my industrial area, the workers, all these houses. So before you even continue, how come some of our leaders came for eight years and they couldn't achieve? much what 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 anyway you you think on, we'll, we'll get back to that mm -hmm. just finish on with, your with, yes smart uh -huh. interpretation so with the Nkrumah, you can see that all the everything he's done is is timely and it's real you can see it it's measurable so it means Nkrumah was using smart it's specific mm -hmm. even though at that time we we're probably not conjure this uh idea of time management but mm -hmm. this guy he was so, I mean, he was so learned that uh, his level of education was just so high that he could see. And he set, he set the blueprint for us. Obviously, when he, he was, uh, when they overthrew him with a coup d'etat and he lived in Guinea, he was still willing to come back. He never gave up on Ghana. And one other thing that could also be said about Nkrumah, Nkrumah is the only president that you can actually say that he never took anything of Ghana for himself. You know, there isn't anything, so sig there isn't anything significant. He didn't have uh, mansions and cars. He didn't have that. He yes, with, with that. the opportunity did, that he, he had. Did he yeah, he didn't have, have anything that. that you could significantly say, oh, this, even if Nkrumah, obviously he was accused of to have taken Ghana's money to uh, give to Guinea and to support because in Krumah's vision he believed that uh, Ghan Africa Ghana's United. independence mm. alone was not sufficient and that it was his it's duty linked with the African uh, it was his duty to yeah. support the others now when he does that even that there is a value to Ghanaians because what I mean uh, last time I watched a clip you saw the likes of uh, Patrice Lumumba uh, Gaddafi, um, you know, so many of these uh, mm -hmm. African leaders, Jomo Kenyatta and the rest, mm -hmm. they all used to come to the feet of Nkrumah. So in effect, Nkrumah becomes a, a leader of Africa. And, and, and that brings some respect mm -hmm. to, Ghana. to Ghana as a nation. They, he set up the project, the uh, Job 600 building project, okay. like a conference center to uh invite all these african countries that were, were working on democracy so his project was quite huge mm -hmm. and so when he eventually realized the money had finished and so um it was recorded in 1965 when the then um governor of bank of ghana uh one um i think jonathan uh Frimpong answer he met in chroma and he said mr chroma the the, the the purse is empty and, and then Krumah said, uh, are you serious? And he, from the 400 million uh, pounds that we had, we now had something like 500, um, was it 500? Uh, 500,000 uh, pounds or something like this. And so then at that point, Ghana was practically banned. Yeah. And it is not for a bad thing. Mm -hmm. he, he's working on the project, but I think that the governor was not a responsible governor because you don't wait for why do you say that because um he waited for the money levels to drop to that extent yes that's when he broke the news to the president with yes in chroma yes because the thing within chroma uh, was that and as much as he was doing his work properly 
uh, he, there was an assassination attempt on his life. And that then um, caused him to be a little bit paranoid or sort of set in. Mm -hmm. And he would look around and obviously he wanted that one party state. And that is when he was actually lifting himself up like a, a god and, and in effect a di dictator. Mm -hmm. And that anybody will do that. <laughs> because if somebody takes a shot at you, you got to make sure that your security is tight. You got to make sure that you stamp on the authority, um, on the opposition, because you think that people yeah. want to kill you, to, yeah. to kill you. So that is understandable. Mm -hmm. And so, but his vision and his love for Ghana, you know, cannot be matched. So that was it's not matched. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you move on to the likes of Kutoka, Ankara, Afrifa taking over. Mm -hmm. um, there isn't anything substantial that one could yeah. talk about. In terms so of all those after the Nkrumah regime, those that came with coup d'etats and all that were there, um, some money in the purse, in Ghana purse, or there was nothing. They came back and, you know, sought for loans outside of what? Mm -hmm. it, because that's the whole idea, you know, and even the moment Nkrumah realized this information, he said, you must be joking. He said, you must have forgotten some of the zeros. <laughs> and the governor said no that, that's it and then Krumah immediately that is why he went on that tour and he never returned so do you think there was some foul play in um, the execution of the, 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 the funds when he was trying to sort of tr complete all the projects do yes. you think there was some foul play in maybe yes, some it, kind of embezzlement yes, somewhere in, in all fairness when we watch some of the old clips you can see that Krumah eventually became very isolated even, in, even when he went on the African platform, mm -hmm. the people had withdrawn from him because, because of that, um, you know, sort of excessive power that uh, he tried to amass mm -hmm. as, uh, you know, he became a dictator in a way. Mm -hmm. And people were sort of singing, Nkrumah can never do wrong. It, it was like in the schooling system. Yeah. That is brainwashing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that kind of went a little bit too far. Mm -hmm. uh, probably that also came in with his association with the Far East you know, with the China and that, you know, that type of China thing where you've got one leader and yeah. everybody, you know, everybody becomes like a robot, yeah. you know, that mentality. And so he became very isolated, but his vision and his passion remain so always for, yeah. for Ghana. Mm -hmm. So lots of credit can be given to him. Now, those who came military, mm -hmm. some guy was interviewed like, oh, we removed Nkrumah. What is your vision for Ghana? And the guy said, oh, I want to make it like the British parliamentary or the British type of economy was. Mm -hmm. So you could see that they had removed him from, from, from power, but they didn't have any idea of what. Because you can't say you're going to uh, uh, have an economy or a system of Ghana like in Britain. Mm -hmm. Ghana is a different country. You've got yeah. to look at Nkrumah was practicing some, some kind of scientific socialism. Mm -hmm. So you've got to look at something that will work. For, for your, your country, country. Yeah. your country is sovereign. Mm -hmm. You've got to be, make your own decisions. You can't say, well, I want to make it like the American something. Or, you know, that's... Even our constitution, when it's being rewritten, it has to be done that even if you borrow some good ideas from somewhere, you've got to ensure that um, you incorporate what is local mm -hmm. into that constitution. Anyway, let, let me chip in this. Once we are close to election day, I think we've got some few days, maybe less than 62 days, mm -hmm. election day. Do you think previously what the um, current government, the MPP, did in terms of the new voters register and all that towards the impending um, voting, mm -hmm. do you think it's ideal for a country like Ghana to go through that process before um, they go for election? Um, it, it is uh, fine. It, it is natural that when you are in power, mm -hmm. you are going to put in place systems that will hopefully, if you're looking for free and fair elections, you want to make sure that each citizen, uh, there is some sort of an ID identity card you can monitor. You know, you, you should so have... So does that mean that should... previously they didn't have that in place and, and how... Were they able to go and vote without that registration card? 
Uh, does, does that mean that previously they didn't have that? They, they would have probably. Uh, I'm, I'm very sure that obviously previous elections they did have that. You know? Watch, watch out for the next series because we are going to hit on the ID cards because we need to deliberate on that. Please share, like, and subscribe, and put your comments below. Thank you for watching. Great.